Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In this one, we're going to be showing you how to set up the PPSSPP emulator. This is a PSP emulator from, uh, you know, the Sony handheld. If you have not run this before, uh, they just did update this to another version. It's literally just three days old. I downloaded it and ran it for a little bit, and there is a significant, uh, you know, of improvements on there. It is faster. Uh, the, it looks like the Vulcan engine has been improved down here. It does run really smooth. So if you want to go ahead and give that a shot, let's go ahead and open up your browser and click on that link in the description section. You will be taken to this web page here. Just go ahead and download that. Once you click that download button, it's going to give you the options. It has Android, Windows, and Mac. On this tutorial, we're going to be doing the Windows. So go ahead and, uh, you know, go ahead and pick a, either the, the installer or the zip. Once you have that downloaded, just go ahead and extract that to your folder. We're going to go inside the folder and launch the emulator. And I will show you the easiest steps here to get this set up and running. So, you know, go ahead. It has both versions for 32-bit and 64-bit. So just, you know, click on the one that corresponds to the system that you have. Once you go ahead and get that started, you're going to be greeted with this window. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to the folder where I put the game in. So you can maneuver by just clicking on browse right here. Once you click on browse, you'll get this window. You're literally just going to tell you where you have the, uh, you know, where you have your folder at. So I'm going to go travel to the folder where I put one of the games. So we'll go inside there. And, you know, again, you're going to do this corresponding to wherever you have your ROMs at. So once you have that, you will see the. Uh, you know, logo come up for the game that you have. So I have driver 76. So once you have that on there, once you see this on here, you know, it literally, you know, recognize your ROM. So what we're going to do is go ahead over to the settings. And then right here, you can see the graphics settings. Now you can go ahead and kind of match mine, or you can go ahead and, you know, do it by your uh, system. Uh, you know, the more uh, powerful system you have, the higher on the, you know, resolution you'll be able to go. You want to play it safe, go ahead and put auto, and it'll kind of try and match what you have on your system as far as, you know, the best settings for it to run graphic-wise. Uh, like I said, I have the Vulcan one chosen, full screen, V-Sync. A lot of the stuff, like on this one here, I would just follow what it has here because I believe this is set up automatically. Then if you have, like, per-game changes that you need to make, you can always come in here. So you can kind of just, you know, glance at what I have here. And then once you have this set up, we can go over to controls. The control mapping you could do on your own. Now, I'm pretty sure it does already, uh, you know, automatically set it up for you if you have a compatible, uh, you know, gamepad or joystick. You can change it if you want to by going in here. And this is one way you can check. I can already tell this is already changed too from the, uh, the previous uh, setup. So if you kind of see already the things in here, it already looks like it's already set up. So if you see this and it has the entries in there, it's more than likely already set up for you. You can go ahead and give it a shot and see if it works like that. Then I do see an auto configure here also, which more than likely if you saw this, it's already, you know, auto configured anyway. So if you see that and it looks like it's already preset, just go ahead and leave it as is. If not, you can go in there, you know, hit the, you know, the settings one by one and hit the corresponding button on your joystick uh, audio you can go in here obviously you want to you want to hear the game uh, you want to enable sound that should already be set by default global volume is set at 10 and so far you know on the other ones so you should need to change anything here but if you do want to go ahead and make changes you can always come back into the audio tab and you know uh, put those settings to your preference networking uh, I guess you can play around with this if you want to play online. Uh, one thing I noticed earlier when I set it up, it did have this set to uh, checkmarked. And that all depends on you. If you want to send Discord, you know, the rich presents, go ahead and leave that clicked. I prefer to not have that on, so I just unchecked it. Uh, this kind of stuff you shouldn't really need to mess around with. Uh, retro uh, achievements was on by default. I went ahead and unchecked that. That all depends on, you know, what you guys want. There's some more settings here. I didn't mess with any of that. Uh, developer tools, you really don't need to mess with that unless you, you know, intend on uh, developing something for it. System, 
the language you can change that here UI sound you can set that up here several uh, things on here to check theme color tint saturation for the color more options on here for the memory stick options here for uh, emulation so like I said best case scenario is always leave everything defaults if it works fine for you the way it is then you shouldn't need to change anything else so once that's done now we're gonna go ahead back and I'm gonna show you I like this little feature right here where it has a homebrew and demos you can go ahead and click on that and you can click on this button here and it'll show you the stuff that's available for download uh, one of my favorites is included on here cave story and these are super cool because you can just browse through these you know take a look get a description of what it is and if you choose to download it just go ahead and click on that install once you've clicked that install button it should uh you know automatically install the game for you and like i said there's different uh you know different things on here that you can download i don't readily recognize uh any of these besides the cave story but again like i said it's pretty cool because you can go in through there you know and download those those are all free and you can you know give them a, a little run and see if you like them uh and then what we're gonna do let's go back here to the main uh window where we set up and now with the settings that we got we're gonna go ahead and launch this i'm gonna go ahead and uh you know show you kind of how this runs and again this will be you know dependent of your system so this was for the auto setting on the graphics so we're going to give this a quick little run here i remember with this one there was always a spot where the uh the game would crash and i don't think that had anything to do with the emulator but i guess i'll just have to you know play it over and see if you know when i get to that spot it crashes again or if it'll keep going but right now this is just just a quick little uh quick little run here Zhao's ride is in the possession of some so this actually looks really good. Yeah, this is definitely running better than the last version. Nice and smooth. No sound glitches. So if, if you've used this in the past and had a little bit of trouble with glitching on sound effects and so forth, uh, I definitely recommend you get this new version that just came out a few days ago. It uh, definitely has improvements on it because mine's used to pop on the sound. I'm not, I'm no longer hearing like the little, you know, clicks and hisses that it had with the other one. And I believe the last version I tried was one, uh, 1 1.6. So this is updated all the way to 1.6. 1, no, 1.17 or something to that effect. So it has been two updates since my last version. So this is running real good. So I can go ahead and jump out of here now. So you can go ahead and quit through here. You know, your uh, standard uh, controls on here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick, like if you wanna save a game, let the sub screen load here. Zao's ride is in the possession of some so just by hitting the escape key you'll be greeted to the screen and you can literally just go ahead and click state uh click save state and you have uh, up to the five on here so you can literally just pick a number you know and just add a new save state to it if you want to load it just simply go back in there and you can go ahead and click you know whichever uh save state that you have done in the past so you can you know choose from any one you have on here so you have up, up to five save states to load from so that's a pretty cool feature there. And uh, so that's pretty much it. So this is a basic, you know, tutorial. There's not a lot to do to get that one running. Uh, real friendly emulator, you know, to get up and running and testing. So hopefully you guys will uh, go ahead and give that a shot if you've ever wanted to play the uh, PSP games emulated on your computer. Uh, that is it for this video. Uh, you guys can go ahead and leave, uh, you know, comments or ask questions on the uh, comment section. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we will see you guys on the next video. Have a good one.